Okay, ladies and gentlemen, those were two easy trig identities to verify. Now let's take a look at something a bit more difficult. In this case, we have cosecant to the fourth minus cotangent to the fourth equals two cotangent squared plus one. In this case, you'll notice I don't have any sines and cosines at all. Previously, I had two key things to try to do. First, start with what was more complicated. Second, try to turn things into sines and cosines because I know them better. Those were two strategies I had. In this case, uh, I can't really work with either because they're both almost equally difficult. Additionally, we know that um, these are cosecants and cotans, so I'm going to have to work in their native states, not necessarily with sines and cosines. I could change them all, but that would create an amazing number of fractions for all this, and I don't think you want that either. So, with that, let's see if we can do some trig identities. Now, something that I also need to mention is on each of these trig identities, even though this has an equal sign, you are not under any circumstances, for now, allowed to move things from one side of equals to the other. You'll notice on the previous example I worked one side down all the way until it matched. That's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be working one side down until we come to a match. Worst case scenario, you work one side down as far as you can go, work the other side down as far as you can go until you get a match, but you can never move stuff across because you might unintentionally add or subtract a solution. So, we need to make sure we don't uh, do that. Now, in this case, I have cosecant to the fourth minus cotangent to the fourth. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you are big boys and girls, so I assume that you can handle factoring x to the fourth minus y to the fourth. x to the fourth minus y to the fourth does nothing more than x squared minus y squared, x squared plus y squared. Now, the reason we want to get to squares is because I have all sorts of properties that deal in squares. I don't have properties that deal in fourths. So, let's see if we can factor this down. In this case, I have cosecant to the fourth theta. So, I'm going to say cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta times cosecant squared theta plus cotangent squared theta equals. I'm not even going to write it down because I already know what it is. It's given. Now, I'm going to look at this and go, wait a minute, surely one of those is a property. And in fact, here we go. Cotangent squared plus 1 equals cosecant squared. Well, I could leave 1 over here, and that's cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta. That's going to equal 1. Well, that is super duper helpful because if I have cosecant squared theta minus cotangent squared theta is 1, now that means this entire side is a whole lot more simple than it was to begin with, and it was by a Pythagorean theorem. Now, this is not a Pythagorean theorem because as a plus, not a minus. However, if I want only cotangents left, I can get rid of some cosecants. Well, cosecant squared equals cotangent squared plus 1. So let's replace this with cotangent squared theta plus 1, parenthesis, parenthesis, plus cotangent squared theta equals. All right, that was by Pythagorean theorem. And now it's nothing more than what function? What do I do next? The answer is add. I have a cotangent squared and a cotangent squared. That makes two cotangent squared thetas plus one equals, and that's what I'm looking for. And I have it proved. Okay, so strategies. Work with the most complicated side first. If possible, go to sines and cosines. Okay, that's your second strategy. What can you never do? You can never cross the equal sign with anything. But your third strategy is you can work both sides down until you find something that matches. All right, I should include an extra example in this. Other than that, you should be ready to try a few problems.